my name is Xiao Meng, and I have been a member of this community since 2020. If you are a new member, please accept our wholehearted welcome. If you have any questions about our practices and topics, we are all here to help. If you are regular, well, welcome back. It is customary in Australia to begin any meetings by acknowledging the traditional owners of our land. So in the spirit of reconciliation, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we work, study, and reside, the Wodi Wodi people of the Darwo Nation, and pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. I also pay my respects to the traditional custodians of the various lines on which you all are. So the check-in sessions have been developed by our communities of practice team and the entire community. The sessions aim to develop a reflective practice in response to changes. Guided by humanistic Buddhism, we'd like to cultivate our practices and build memorable friendships. Last week, we were delighted to have Venerable Miao Guang back to share the Bodhi Let Tell story about the poorest. This week, Venerable Miao Guang will get us to explore the true meaning of self-love. So let's uh, welcome Venerable Miao Guang. Hello, thank you, Xiao Meng. So shall we begin with the three-minute mindfulness practice? Yes. Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, in my previous two sessions with you, um, we had the opportunity to try the full body scan um, in the establishment of full open awareness by observing the body. And so in my final opportunity with you for this month, I would like to move on to the observation of the so-called elements, continuing from our previous two practices. So let's begin. So as you begin. Um, just do a quick check to see whether you're comf comfortably seated in your chair. The soles of your feet touching the ground on the floor. Your back erected in a non-stressful and relaxed way. And a quick visualization of your body from as if you're right across from yourself or sitting from your right or left. That it's forming a straight line from the top of your head through your neck to your spine and the bottom of your spine. Okay, now that we're ready, let's begin. We are aware of the body in the sitting posture. And just as the body rests on the chair or the cushion, we let the mind rest on the body. And without losing this embodied presence of the mind, we will now proceed to the practice of the four ways of establishing mindfulness. First of all, the anatomical parts, which you have done in the previous two sessions, done swiftly, and then onto elements, done slowly. Begin with the anatomical parts, starting on the top of the head, aware of skin, and from the top of the head to the face, neck, both shoulders simultaneously, both arms, the hands, front of torso, back of torso, both hips, legs, feet, and we are aware of this whole body in the sitting posture of the skin cultivating an attitude of non-attachment. And the flesh, beginning with the feet, moving up your legs, your hips and the torso, the hands, the arms, the shoulders, neck and head. And we are aware of this whole body in the sitting posture of its fleshy parts, cultivating an attitude of non-attachment. And the bones, beginning with the head, from the head to the neck, shoulders, arms, hands, torso, 
hips, legs, and the feet. And we are aware of this whole body in the sitting posture of its bones, cultivating an attitude of non-attachment. Now we move on to the elements, beginning with the earth element, which represents solidity or hardness. Starting with the head. We are aware of the head area and knowing that there is some earth element. There's no need to strain or force ourselves trying to distinctly feel or sense the earth element. Enough for our purposes to know that it is there. There is some solidity in this part of the body, particularly ev ev evident in the bones, but found throughout the head. And from the head to the neck, aware of this part of the body with the knowledge, there is solidity there, earth element. And from the neck, one shoulder. Choosing one shoulder, we are aware of this part of the body, knowing there is earth element, that quality of solidity or hardness. From the shoulder to the upper arm, earth element. Lower arm, earth element. And the hand, earth element. Now to the other shoulder, earth element. Upper arm, earth element. Remember at this stage, anytime your mind wanders off, it's okay. Simply smile and tell yourself, ah, my mind has been taken on a ride. All I need is to come back to this present moment and continue. Now we move on to our lower arm, earth element. Your hand, earth element. The upper half of your torso, earth element. Lower half of the torso, earth element. Choosing one hip, earth element. Upper leg, earth element. Lower leg, earth element. And the foot, earth element. Now onto your other hip, earth element. Upper leg to your lower leg and all the way to your feet. We are aware of the knowledge that there is earth element. As we are aware of this whole body in the sitting posture as pervaded by the earth element with the understanding, earth element internally in this body. Earth element externally, outside, in nature, just the same, no real difference. And this earth element is not something I can truly own, completely control. This earth element is empty, empty of a self. Due to limited time, we will only stop here, but in your own time, we can follow a similar pattern in the practice of the contemplation of the water element, the fire element, as well as the wind element in the same manner. But for today, 
I hope your mind has been able to rest on this body through this really refined step of contemplation. Now please gently smile and open your eyes. Thank you very much. Okay. So the chosen story for this week that I have found is story 142. 142 from the Bodhi Light podcast stories, which is Love Yourself. And this is how the story goes. It began with a conversation between husband and wife, but even more, who was also king and queen. And so it was King Prasenajit of Kosala who turned to his beloved wife and asked her a question. In this world, is there anyone else that you love more than yourself? And at first, the king was afraid that the, the queen may not be honest with him, but to his surprise, she said that, my dear king, there's no one that I love more than myself. In return, she asked the king the same question, to which he was surprised to be honestly revealing the same answer, that there's no one else that he loves more than himself. So the king turned to Shakyamuni Buddha and repeated the story and raised the question. He was wondering, really, what kind of people would truly love themselves? And what kind of people do not? And in answer to this question, the Buddha replied, It's quite true. Most of us love ourselves more than anyone else. There's no one else. But how does one truly love oneself? We can observe. If there is someone whose body, speech, and mental actions are done in a way that it hurts other people, this really is the kind of people who don't really love themselves. Because if you truly love yourself, you would not conduct in such actions, speech, or thoughts. But on the other hand, if there's someone who can speak, act, and think in a way that shows true loving kindness to others, then you are revealing the fact that you, in fact, truly love yourself. Why? As we react or respond or treat other people, we become aware of the fact that we are reciprocal and everything is interconnected. So if you treat others with kindness, whether in words or deeds, you are sowing good karmic seeds. So the way you treat others will certainly influence how they treat you in return. So no matter what happens, each person reaps the karma they have sown. And so some of us spend our whole lives looking for someone more deserving of our love than ourselves. But the truth is, according to the Buddha, that there is no one else whom you'd be able to find that you love more than yourself. We deserve to love ourselves as we truly are. And we deserve to be one and at ease with ourselves. Because if we cannot even love ourselves, how can we think to love others and even to be loved in return? So this was the Buddha's answer. And I found this quite comforting and truly intriguing because the story highlights the meaning of true self-love because it is the moment when we connect with our true self and to act, speak, and think in a way that truly uh, reflects that true self. And so this can only happen by purified minds. And so if we, <coughs> excuse me, if we truly love ourselves, we are aware of karma, <coughs> its effect on us, and we are aware of our interconnectedness. So that's why <coughs> the ending um, verse we have chosen for this story is this. <coughs> Excuse me. Love can be selfish, but it can also be selfless. Love can be defiled, but it can also be pure. Love can be narrow, but it can also be broad. Love can be foolish, but it can also be transcendental. So I've enjoyed the story, and I hope you also enjoy the story too. Thank you very much for listening. Hey, thank you, Venerable Miao Guang, for sharing uh, one more profound stories with us. Uh, now, um, we are invited to contemplate the following two questions. The first one is, what are the characteristics and behaviors of someone who truly love themselves? And the second one is, 
how does loving oneself relate to one's behaviors towards others? And now we will be placed in groups of three to four to share and discuss. In the discussion, we recommend you spend some time getting to know each other and then discussing our questions. There will be some Zoom notifications to guide you, but feel free to let the flow of your discussions guide you. And our sessions are guided by Meta, which is uncondition unconditional love and kindness for all sentient beings. Let's use this breakout session to express and receive loving kindness to and from one another and take time to pause, share, and listen. We'll also ask you to share some of your findings with the larger group at the end of the breakout discussion. So now let's go to our breakout rooms for rich and nourishing discussions. See you all back in 15 minutes. Well, welcome back everyone. I hope you have been enjoying your breakout room discussions. And now please feel free to write some of your reflect, to share some of your reflections in the chat box. And then uh, we're gonna invite our poster team to design the lovely poster for us for further reflections. And maybe uh, we will invite Venerable Miao Guang to give further comments on those ch chat box messages later. But now, uh, please allow me to share my screen first to end the session. Thank you, Dr. Miao Guang, for sharing with us uh, the stories and accompany us in this whole month. So we really hope the check-in session was helpful to you, and we hope you experienced unconditional love and compassion of this community. But for anyone who might be experiencing a greater need than what today could meet, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us and you can also reach out to the professional organization on the screen. So also we'd like to take this opportunity to thank you Venerable Miao Guang and her team for allowing us to post our Sunday check-in videos on the Fu Guangshan English Dharma Services YouTube channel to scatter the magic to more people. So if you'd like to catch up on the missed episodes or would like to know more about Fu Guangshan and humanistic Buddhism, please feel free to have a look. Here is the link and the QR code. And next week, uh, we'd like to invite Audrey, an uh, 18-year-old uh, girl who loved like, mu uh, making music to share with us her turning point stories. So if you are interested, please feel free to join us. And uh, we are calling for the turning point stories for the second half of the year. So if you are interested in sharing your stories and reflections with the community, please message us in the chat box or inform us by email. Okay, as we check out today, let's recite the dedication of marriage together to sign love and compassion to whoever is in need. Let us now dedicate the goodness of what you have done to all living beings. May kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity pervade all worlds. May we cherish and build affinities to benefit all beings. May Chan, Pure Land, and Precepts inspire equality and patience. May our gratitude and humility give rise to great vows. Thank you, Venerable Miao Guang, for your time and generous sharing with us today. And thank you, Lai Ching, for being our IT master behind the scenes. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Now we will have our Euro plenary session. So please stay around if you have time. Otherwise, see you all again next Sunday at 11 a.m.